Hey there, internet friends, and welcome to That D Plus Show. Class is in session for the only show from that nerdy site that lets you know what kind of quality to expect right from the name. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and each week we dive into a different Disney Plus offering to discuss its history, how it holds up today, and our general impressions of the thing. If you like the show, we'd love it if you like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. Joining me today, we have Cameron Abbott. How you doing, Cameron? Hey, what's going on, nerds? What is going on? And today we're going to be talking all about the premiere episode of Moon Knight, a.k.a. The Goldfish Problem. Uh, why did we pick it? Because SEO plus MCU is is what I've written in the document here. Um, uh, you know, the I'm I'm still at that point where I'm not burnt out on MCU shows, so I'm happy to still sit down and watch them every time they the new ones come out. And uh, and. Everybody else is going to be talking about this episode this week uh, as well, because uh, it's the new MCU thing. And also, Oscar Isaac, really good. So, um, yeah. Uh, this show uh, is originally released uh, March 30th, 2022. Uh, it was that first episode there. And then it's going to be re- released weekly over six installments. So it will be ending on May 4th, 2022, uh, which seems like almost a weird attempt at a tie-in into Star Wars Day. Um, but we've also just got the news that the Obi-Wan episode, uh, the Obi-Wan premiere has been delayed a couple days, um, to the end of, uh, May. So there's going to be like a, a few week gap there where I'm like, I don't know what people are going to be watching on Disney plus in terms of it, there's, we're going to go back into this vacuum of no MCU show or, or, uh, or Disney or star Wars show for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting uh has a runtime of uh, presumably 45 ish minutes who knows what the other ones are going to look like but this one ran about 45 minutes in the mcu timeline of things uh we had the eternals uh that came out in november we had hawkeye november to december uh spider-man no way home there at the end of december now we have moon knight here is kind of the the uh picking up kind of from where spider-man no way home left off I mean, I don't know if it's doing that in the timeline or anything, but um, it has been like the the largest gap that we've had in MCU phase four stuff, I think, since the beginning. Um, uh, and then we're going to have uh, well, this will lead right into Doctor Strange in the, Mar- uh, in the Multiverse of Madness, which comes out May 6th, uh, right there at the uh, after the end of Moon Knight. Uh, we have Thor Love and Thunder coming up there in July. Um, and She-Hulk sometime TBD 2022 uh, are kind of next on the slate. Uh, the roll call here, uh, Mohamed Dieb uh, is the director uh, who's uh, largely new um, uh, prior work, including uh, the films Cairo 678, Clash, and Amira, um, which appear to be um, kind of like non- U.S. productions. I don't know if they were Egyptian productions or uh, some or elsewhere in Africa, Middle East. Um, but uh, cool to see the Marvel kind of reaching out uh, outside of kind of the American landscape for some directors here. Um, uh, the writer uh, of the and, and creator of the series is Jeremy Jeremy Slater, um, who kind of mixed bag in terms of uh, his previous work. Uh, You have the 2015 Fan Force Dick, uh, a.k.a. Fantastic Four. Uh, You have the 2017 Netflix version of Death Note. Uh, Both of those, I would argue, quite bad. Um, uh, But he's also worked on the Exorcist TV series, uh, as well as he was the one who brought the Umbrella Academy to to Netflix. uh, And I quite enjoy that show so uh, at least he he's won me over there um and then uh kind of in the future queue for imdb uh he's apparently working on a wily e coyote movie um whatever that's going to whatever shape that's going to take the form of uh, and then he's also connected to mortal kombat 2 uh the sequel of uh last year's mortal kombat film uh were you gonna mm-hmm. add anything there cameron I mean, I know, like, looking back on it, I was not as, like, down. Like, I, I was not as, like, mean about uh, the Netflix Death Note as other people were. Um, that being said, Fantastic, like, the Fantastic Four movie, like, really bad. Mm-hmm. 
um, like atrociously bad, especially since it's like there are so many film there there are, there are only so many films that you can tell there was a like the additional footage had to be got later mm -hmm. um because the studio wasn't happy with the film as fantastic four like that movie is like half of that movie is clearly not part of the original vision to the point where like i think kate mara has like like a really atrocious wig for like half that movie versus like having like her natural haircut like for the rest of the half like so like it, it's interesting so like i've never felt like um like i would entirely like hammer that on uh this guy as um as the creator especially with like the success of umbrella academy and other stuff like that so mm -hmm. um like and like for like for what it is like people like the unfortunate thing about the American Death Note, like the Netflix Death Note, is that it's like people people have like rose tinted glasses to the original like Japanese work, and so it, it I shouldn't say anything. I'm I'm gonna get canceled. For it. So I will um, uh, just just to to give my two cents on both those items. One, I will I will chime in that he was not alone in working on the script for fantastic four. Uh, that was also a, um, uh, you know, the work of Simon Kinberg and Josh Trank and Josh Trank, the director also of fantastic four has like repeatedly gone out and said like that got studio noted to hell and that the final product is not something I'm happy if, <laughs> that my name is attached to. So, um, yeah. you know, I think, I think there were certainly other issues going on with fantastic four as for death note. I will say like, because back when I was doing Trevor Trove still, um, uh, I like went through and watched the the anime uh, Death Note for the first time um, as like a kind of a regular series. I think like either in the lead up to the Netflix one or just like in conjunction with and like I like the first half of Death Note, I think there's like a really fun kind of cat and mouse thing there. And then it completely goes in a different direction at one point. And I'm like, Oh, I don't, I don't like this, <laughs> this series anymore. And it doesn't really ever cap recapture its magic. I will say with the, the Netflix film, while I think some elements of it are absolutely bad, uh, Lakeith Stanfield as L I think was an inspired oh, choice and he was, he did a great job and was bringing like a fun energy to that character. Um, I did not. I don't think the 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 main character whose name uh, escapes me at this point. Like I didn't. I don't think he was particularly good, and uh, I think it definitely tried to kind of. Um, it it was setting up a future for like you know let's tell more of the story in a next chapter kind of thing. Um, but they very much kind of like counter their chickens before they were hatched i think in terms of how well that was going to come across so um yeah, yeah. it I, I i will say i think the the you know the chunk the the opening chunk of the anime is better is significantly better than the netflix version but next netflix version wasn't entirely bad um i will say like um i like it it that movie in particular wins me at the end of the film Cause like the way things kind of like fall into place um, as like, kind of like the plot, like, like the, um, the plot, not as in the film plot, but like a uh, lights plot mm -hmm. uh, is kind of like revealed at the end. I really like that aspect of it. Also, Willem Dafoe as Ryuk, I thought was like a really inspired choice. Yeah. Um, Cause like, yeah, was, you like you want, other. you want him to have that kind of like deep raspy kind of voice to, to Ryuk. It it's um, and i will say like yeah. it was almost i would have liked it even better if they had just d done some fun prosthetic stuff with william defoe and, and william oh yeah defoe. it could have been and you wouldn't even necessarily yeah, need great. to do a ton with him oh yeah because he, he, he already kind of already has that like that that you know very iconic sharp image sharp edges kind of face um that could have played with fun but yeah it was like his his vocal performance great but the CGI was less CGI. less than Trash. <laughs> so um, definitely anyway. Granted, it's still like people are like really hard on that. It's like people also like really like the Japanese live action version and their CGI is not better. So mm -hmm. 
Um, that being said, I like I really so like when it comes to Moon Knight, I had a lot like especially with the success of Umbrella Academy and how well that has like the way that that has taken its source material and brought it to and evolved it to being an even greater product, like an even greater end product is to me a. Um, OK, uh, I, I think that's a I think. I think yeah. that's like a, a better representation of the energy and the work that he's going to bring to this. Yeah. He's he's like with with the Umbrella Academy. He's the like he's the one who adapted it and is acting as the showrunner for it. And here he's kind of doing the same with um with Moon Knight. With Moon um, Knight, yeah. So so I have because of how well Umbrella Academy uh, kind of like took its original concept and original graphic novels and then evolved that going forward. And like turn it into like, and I actually, and this is my opinion, it is I think the the television show on Netflix is actually superior to the original comic books. Um, I just think that they are where the original comic books was a lot of like cool core concepts that um, Gerard Way kind of like put together in a really cool way. Um, it is better put together and like better tells a better story as a cohesive narrative in television versus that. And of course it has like the, the, the great opportunity of hindsight and in collaborative working. Cause I mean, that's the thing about television is that it's such a massive collaborative work um, that people, the more people you bring into it, the more things can change and do differently. So Gerard way working with him on that to kind of bring forth this television show is really what kind of like excitement I had for moon Knight because as somebody who like is a familiar with Moon Knight's kind of like very like murky legacy as far as like it's a much older property from from Marvel that was kind of like revamped and rebooted in kind of the post 2000s era of comic book um, storytelling and kind of like skirts a line of um it skirts a line of being like you know, quasi problematic for mental, like mental health and mental disability and telling a really awesome kind of multi, like multi personality aspected story like that we get to see here. So I'm, I'm really stoked for what we, what we saw. And I like, I think that this has the right attitude and vision for what we have going on. So I'm excited for the rest of the season. Cool. Yeah, we will uh, we'll dive into a little bit more of that here in a little bit. Um, back to starring here. Um, uh, of course, we have Oscar Isaac here as Stephen Grant slash Mark Spector slash Moon Knight. Um, uh, you know, known from projects like Inside Llewellyn Davis, Ex Machina, Star Wars, the sequel trilogy, of course, uh, X Men Apocalypse, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, and uh, most recently Dune. Um, and he will, of course, also be. If it ever happens, uh, Solid Snake in the Metal Gear Solid movie. Um, It'll happen. Yeah, here's hope. I believe. Um, uh, Ethan Hawke playing Arthur Harrow, uh, known yeah. from the Before Sunrise, Sunset Midnight uh, series of films, uh, as well as films like Training Day uh, and Boyhood, uh, that fun Linklater experiment of making a movie over the course of 10 years or whatever. Uh, and he's going to be, it, it, it's, it's at least an interesting film um, uh, just in terms of execution. Um, it's not like, okay. An execution. Okay. I was about to say it is definitively not an interesting film. It's yeah. I mean, the, the, the making of boyhood <laughs> is a far more interesting story than what they actually do with the film boyhood. Um, but he's also going to be in uh, the upcoming knives out too. Um, May Kal uh, Kalamawi uh, is briefly heard in this episode as Lila El Fauli, uh, known from projects like The Long Road Home, uh, Rami, and uh, she's also a voice in NBA 2K21. So I uh, saw that on her IMDb. I was like, all right. Um, uh, I'm, I'll be very curious to see kind of how that role is fleshed out quite literally in, in, uh, in the future episodes. Cause this is, we only get a vocal performance in this one. Um, we have F speaking of vocal performance. We have F Murray Abraham as the voice of Kanchu. 
um, uh, probably best known to many audiences as uh, uh, Salieri, um, which he won the Oscar for in the 1984 film Amadeus, I believe. Um, but he's also in uh, things like Last Action Hero. Uh, he's also in Inside Llewellyn Davis. Uh, uh, and then in the more recent era of things, he's in films like The, uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, he's in the series Homeland. And he's also in the series Mythic Quest, if you are a fan of that Ubisoft in produced uh series on apple plus um he plays like the super pretentious writer of their big game um oh the, he'd be great oh man i gotta that's awesome i've, I've only watched uh, like i've only seen i think the first episode but like when when uh when he came up i was like oh yeah he's it he, yep he's that guy yep um uh, and then lastly, um, uh, I don't know if I necessarily would have considered this otherwise, but in the end credits, like this was one of the like featured credits before it goes into like just the the list of names. Uh, Kareem El Hakim playing the Kanchu performer. Um, so basically the person on set oh, as cool. the body of Kanchu underneath the cgi or or that they put the cgi on top of and stuff um primarily uh, they are primarily a documentarian slash cinematographer uh many of their uh their or their handful of credits on imdb are as a cinematographer for a very for various documentaries but he did have one additional acting credit in uh the i believe netflix series paranormal um so yeah shout out to that and yeah it was like i i would not have thought of that otherwise uh, especially because i thought a lot of it was just cg um but they gave him a big old splash screen uh all to himself so uh pulled that Good in for him here. yeah um some trivia here uh in egyptian mythology Khonshu in the or Khonsu in the comics spelled Khonshu is the god of the moon his name means traveler referring to the moon traveling across the sky as Kansu is a god who protects nighttime travelers, he, is all, he also has the title of Defender, and in the comics, Moon Knight serves in the Defenders group. Uh, this is the third time Oscar Isaac has played a Marvel character, previously playing Apocalypse in X-Men Apocalypse in 2016, as well as Miguel O'Hara slash Spider-Man 2099 in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and of course he'll be in the upcoming sequel. Um... Uh, the show's producers cite the psychological thriller Memento as an influence on the show. I definitely kind of saw those vibes. Uh, and then this last one is is an interesting one. And there's it. This one is probably the most like pointed out one in the uh, in the IMDb trivia. Uh, but it's weird because it's still I don't think has really been confirmed. And, uh, and so I don't know necessarily how Marvel is going to handle it. But uh, Gaspard Uliel. Uh, who is credited and will be por presumably portraying the character Midnight Man, uh, uh, sadly died two months before the premiere of Moon Knight uh, following a skiing accident on January 19th, 2022. Oh, uh, this happened uh, two days after the first trailer of the miniseries, uh, 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 the, yeah, after the first trailer was released. Um, and I remember like seeing that kind of making the rounds of like Moon Knight actor, you know, passes away. And it was like it's he he had like or his his talent agency i think had credited that like this person we represent is going to be you know in moon knight uh and stuff and and marvel didn't really like announce it or weigh in on it but there have been a couple like interviews after the fact where cast members or people you know a a contact at marvel or somebody has said like um you know uh he, he was a he was a friend of uh you know of of the company kind of thing um and so yeah it's it's but he has not really been shown off in any promotional material uh leading well, up to the the series so so it's like that's why i put like presumably if if those reports are real and they haven't like edited around him or edited him out of the the series or anything like that, um, he will be making an appearance in the future uh, episodes. But yeah, it'll be it was a, it was a you know it seems like a, just kind of a, a sad freak accident circumstance. Um, but yeah, he, he went the way of Sonny Bono. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Um, so how does it, uh, hold up slash what did we think? Uh, Cameron, uh, I'll throw it to you. You touched a, a little bit, uh, so or earlier on what you think of the series. Um, uh, yeah, let's kind of dive into some more of those thoughts. I loved it. Yep. Um, I am a massive sucker, like big memento vibes for sure. 
Um, I'm an absolute sucker for this, these kinds of stories. I love the idea of, you know, it's... Oscar Isaac does such an amazing job of really bringing this bumbling museum gift shopkeeper to life in such a fun and believable manner. Um, I think one of my favorite moments was when he, uh, when he is just at his gift shop station and, um, a coworker comes by and is like, Oh, I can't wait for dinner. Like our date tomorrow. And he's just like, uh, and he just like immediately, it's just like a bumbling fool who realizes that he stumbled into gold. Mm-hmm. Like a like a, a terrific thing. And he doesn't even question it. He's just like, yes, let's do that. Like, that sounds fantastic. I can't wait. And then immediately gets called out by somebody to be like, what's a vegan doing out of at a steak restaurant? And it's like salad. Yeah, like, you, it, it's yeah, I, can, I, can, I can have salad, bread, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's it does such a great job of conveying this. This very believable oath that when it comes to a more dramatic moment like in the in the german town he is like in like it it is believable that he is in like incompetent in this moment and mm-hmm. does not know what to do yeah at the same time uh like and it, it when it does the blackout moments when it like he blacks out and he wakes up and realizes that he's committed a massive act of violence <laughs> yeah. yeah um yeah, it, it just does such a wonderful job of doing that and like showing that I mentioned earlier, I think that this is going to have a lot of great adaptive energy to it as far as kind of the original source material, what the 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 iteration of Moon Knight that they're going off of and that they're doing here, I think is going to be done incredibly well um, with Oscar Isaac. I like I have a lot of feelings about where I think the show will be going, especially in the next episode. But I also thought that it was super interesting to note, like we've seen in this episode pretty much all the promotional footage that we we've saw like there's very few moments in promotional trailers and stuff that was shown in the trailers that it was not in this episode so that has me very excited i think that that is a good indicator of like midnight man and everything else that we you mentioned um i think that that is a good indicator of like where things could possibly go with this Mm -hmm. um the preview like the preview for the next episode had footage for stuff like we've not like has not been seen at all yet And so I'm extremely excited to see and kind of like delve into how he's because like the entire idea of this is Steven. This episode was Steven's story. I have a very strong feeling that next episode is going to be Mark's story. And then we're going to converge on how like how basically they got there. And that's my theory of how it's going to go down. It could go down completely different, but I'm just excited for this ride. Mm -hmm. I'm not burnt out on Marvel shows yet. Hawkeye, I feel like did a great job of like rejuvenating my interest in a televised or like a serial adaption of um, Marvel based works. It has me excited because it's going to lead us up to, you know, uh, Dr. Strange. And I think that, you know, timeline wise, not necessarily story beat wise. Yeah. But I also love the idea that we're flushing out. and We can tell these kinds of like more nuanced stories, these more like non a typical superhero genre stories like Moon Knight. If you had told me five years ago, it, like te- it's more than so even 10 years ago that we would one day have a like a six episode mini series of moon Knight, i would have said that's awesome but like how mm-hmm. like like that takes there needs to be so much just for you to believe that this can take place in the same universe as iron man there's so much work that needs to be done and the mar the mcu does an amazing job of laying that groundwork of like this is a big universe like Trevor, you and I talked about it. We watched the Eternals. Like the Eternals, literally, like, like it's the fact that they're able to tell these stories in the in a shared universe, where, yes, guess what? Sometimes the Avengers aren't going to be the ones that get answered the call. That's why you have things like you know the Defenders and stuff like that. Like I like the idea of that. Like this is small stakes, or this is like personal stakes. Um, granted, this seems like I love the like. Ethan Hawke's character especially is incredible. And Ethan Hawke is like an inspired choice for this role. Mm -hmm. Um, He's such an amazing, like 
he is such an underrated and amazing actor who I think really just really went like dormant in the public consciousness for such a long time in the like 2000s and like early 20 teens. I think that he's had just such an awesome resurgence in the last couple of years. And this is just like such, he is such an inspired choice for this because he does cat. Like he was such a great job of capturing, um, I forgot what film it is, but it's a film in the nineties and it has him, uh, Ben Stiller and a couple other people. And it's very much like a gen, like gen X defining film. And he had, was such a great way of capturing kind of like this hope of like an entire, like this kind of like concept of a hope of an entire generation. Oh, reality. Of bites. like, you know, yeah. Reality bites. Yeah. Excellent film. Excellent film. Super pretentious by like modern standards. It's very much um, when I think of like rent, like Mark from rent and stuff like that, I immediately think of reality bites. Um, Fair. Cause they kind of, put, yeah. I mean, it, that was, that was like a, a, particular type of personality that gen x had that i think is very unique and so having it now like 20 like 20 30 years later where you have a where he's like this enigmatic cult leader um that has like it's just the power that like in a I, it's such a great thing in a show when they basically make it believable that this person has the situation completely under their control mm-hmm when he's in, like when he's in that town and he like realizes oh there's a stranger among us and then he does the thing where it makes everybody bow like phenomenal um like and then for that to kind of play and, back and into, i love that it's it's even played for like a great laugh of, of oscar isaac being like oh oh shoot <laughs> like you know, he's like oh bollocks oh, and yeah, it's like oh, perfect bollocks. yeah 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 like he and realizes oh he's yeah. been he's been found out um yeah just uh yeah, and like the way he does it later in the in the museum mm-hmm. and gosh, when he picks up that there's something very different about Steven, when he's just like, you know, the, the, the scarab, the whole thing, and he's like, and he realizes he's like, you know, you're like, there's something he has such a, as a character, you know, he's for real because we see at the beginning. And by the way, incredible job doing the audible crunch of the glass in his feet, like in his shoes, when it's like in, in the museum, when he's walking towards Steven, you can sm- like you can hear the smallest sounds of glass crunching, which is just wild. Such great attention to detail on that. Um, yeah, I just had such an amazing time with this the show, this episode. I can't wait for next week. Um, I'm on the edge of my seat, just like excited for what we're gonna see next. Yeah, I um, I I watched. I've watched very little of the promotional stuff. Like I think I watched the 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 first trailer that came out. And then any other new things that they've been showing, like little clips here and there and stuff, I've just kind of been like, yeah, I'm I'm excited to go into a series where I don't really know this character from anybody. And and I'm just kind of excited to be along for the ride. And even when I, I do the like when I go and watch like a nerdist, like here are the Easter eggs you might have missed or whatever. And they talk about like like. You know, um, Arthur Harrow is a character that's only been in the comics one other time or like one time. And so like this is seemingly a a like much more like original character versus like inspired by that character. It's just he's kind of got his name and maybe there are some kind of crossover elements and stuff. But it, it leads me to like this idea of like even some of the theorists out there are like we don't really know what they're going to do it doesn't look like they're adapting any like one particular moon knight storyline or anything like that so um it it leaves me very kind of like excited to just kind of be along for the ride in this one and i think um uh one of the other elements is just oscar isaac is is you know a phenomenal actor just of course and seeing how he's kind of portraying both of these characters be it steven or mark is like really cool and interesting and it's like immediately reminiscent of the the um the gif that was making the rounds on twitter a couple weeks ago of like christopher reeves kind of like going from like um you know clark kent slouch to like like changing his posture and taking the glasses off and becoming superman like there are those <laughs> moments when like Steven goes into or comes out of a blackout or whatever, where like he goes into the blackout and comes out as Mark and then like almost immediately like falls, like you, you Mm -hmm. get, you get Mark and like that kind of like 
body and posture and and presence very briefly before like steven like comes to and realizes and then he's like he shrinks down again and i think it's a really cool it's 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 a very you know subtle but very like effective way of of helping kind of delineate between those two personas that i think is like really cool and really interesting and obviously like a lot more is going to be made about the voice necessarily of like, you know, him doing his little kind of cockney um, uh, accent as Steven versus seemingly American Mark, Mark Spector in, in his mind. And so there's definitely like I'm curious how those elements are going to how, how they're going to intermingle um, to the point. you. Which, by the way, yeah, I, I want to say I love the way that they've already built that. Like I can already see immediately at the end. It's like everything clicks. Everything makes sense that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. the oh mom you went you you traveled again and i got a new postcard from you like this is like i love the idea that well, one i love the idea that mark leaves steven a postcard from like wherever he's gone um that's kind of like the implication that oh. i picked up from that i didn't i didn't put that together i didn't i did not see that as all at all as like he's leaving messages or he's getting postcards from mark as his mother yeah, no, I did. I, well, so, yeah, this, this is kind of like my perspective on it. My theory is that when he's talking to his mother, he's leaving deep because he, if you notice, he's leaving like very personal, detailed notes. Like the only like these are the things you would tell your mother that you wouldn't tell anybody else. Like, oh, yeah, I met this girl or like all this stuff, like like very detailed stuff. And I love I think my theory is, is that mom is actually Mark. And so he's leaving these voicemails. So Mark knows what's going on in Steven's life. And so he knows how to adapt to it when he has to be Steven versus when he has to be, when he gets to be Mark. Also, did you notice that um, Mark in the mirror um, has like straight hair, like, like, like straighter hair. And then when he's Steven, his hair's a little bit curled. I mean, I, I, it's a little, it's a little noticed, bit more disheveled. I've noticed uh, both like, especially in that in the in the kind of closing scene where Mark is like actively talking at him or whatever like he yeah. they they look largely similar in terms of like how their hair is done i think in the in the apartment you see different shades of it but like part of that is just because of how those different scenes are being shot or in the darkness or whatever um but i also admittedly i've not like gone back through and like looked you know frame for frame i'll be curious if your your theory there kind of pans out because like Mark is or um, uh, Stephen isn't always being particularly truthful. Like when he's talking about at the, the end, he's talking to mom about how the date went or whatever. He's like, you know, he's he's singing the praises about it, but clearly he missed it because he was gone. He was blacked out for those two days or whatever. So. I'm I'm actually pretty excited because I, I think that's going to be like a plot thing later um, where Mark tries to play up like it went well. Um, and she's going to be like, what are you talking about? And he's going to realize that like Stephen lied to him or something. I think that would be interesting. I, I really like this idea of it. Um, even if it turns out not to be true, it's fine. Um, but I also like the idea of the, the goldfish, like the goldfish died. And so he had to replace it. But the goldfish originally had only one fin. Mm hmm. And the idea, like I told you before, like when you were in here the other day, I can't like I can't give you a goldfish that only has one fin. Yeah, it's like it's it's leaving it totally possible. It's the perfect name for the episode, the goldfish problem. Um, which again, also because goldfish has um, like a short short term memory. Yeah. Um, the idea of like you have the memory of a goldfish. So I love the aspect that they play with. Also, all the music is sleep themed. Mm -hmm. Um, like it, quite or, obviously wake me up before yeah, you yeah. go go uh, obviously that one uh -huh. um or the the because the opening number is bob dylan talking about or in, like it's it's pr in particular i think it's a song that he wrote like after being a born again christian or something like that and and it's like am i doing this because of me or because of like it's what god has ordained me to do which ties in very nicely to mm -hmm. the uh the ethan hawk character there um yeah, um, I, I, I'm, I'm especially. I'll be curious to your other theory there of like we saw things from Steven's perspective this time, and like maybe next week we'll see it from from Mark's perspective. I kind of hope they don't do that because I love, I love what they did in this episode of he's sure. out and then immediately like we just see the aftermath or we just cut to like him, you know, coming back um, in in that scene. Um, you know, most notably, I think one of my favorites. 
um, is probably the like f uh, like somebody grabs the scarab, he blacks out, and he comes back to, and his hand is really bloody, and everybody's on the ground oh, yeah. and stuff. And it it because it ties to this this theory or this this fun thing I explored in a in a you know I'm gonna put my pretentious theater hat on for a or gla- glasses I did a, I did a glasses thing not a hat thing, um, uh, but in a directing class in college. Um, we did a, like, we had a project where it was basically like, tell a story over like five static, you know, images or something like that. And we basically, as the director said, like lights down, everybody closed their eyes. The actors got into new position lights up and, you know, the next scene was happening. And I played around in one of those, like the, I don't remember what the scene was, but it was basically like. Uh, like a, a an encounter with a bully effectively for for all intents and purposes and like lights down and instead of just cutting to the next scene while everybody's eyes were closed i had the actors like crash and bang a whole bunch of stuff to like simulate the fight uh and then eyes like open or lights up and and everybody opened their eyes and saw the aftermath or whatever and it's that fun idea of like whatever you're imagining in your head is going to be most likely more you know, vibrant and engaging than what we can put on stage or what we can, what we can do there. So I like the idea of us not seeing it and really just kind of like, like having, letting our imagination run free in a lot of those moments. Like even, even the, when he comes to in the, like in the Bavarian town or whatever it is. um, And he like looks like a, we the first thing we see is like his jaw completely screwed up. It's like, oh, that's that something bad happened there. Uh, and then like you, he looks up at like the person behind him or whatever and like does that little wave. And you can you can piece together from <laughs> that that he just jumped out of that building. <laughs> like that is there. are Oh, I I took it as um he got knocked out. Oh, like, I mean, yeah, he, like, like I, he was hit in the face and like thrown out the window. I, I, I took it as he jumped out trying to escape those guys. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it also could have been they threw him out the window, whatever. But it's like you see that the window is very clearly like not whole anymore. And so one way or another, Mark slash Steven went flying out that window and crashed to the ground below. Mm-hmm. But because of this dissociative identity thing is is unaware of it blissfully unaware maybe <laughs> um yeah, looks back up I and has that funny little like waving at the person kind of moment my thought of like why this disruptions happened and all of a sudden now steven's waking up in um like mark like quote unquote mark's area of like their kind of shared existence is that he got a concussion uh when he got thrown out the window um like he got hit and then thrown out the window so if he received a concussion that could be causing this kind of like slip in slip out um granted that's just like my theory like once again i i walked away with this episode with a lot of different theories of like mm-hmm. how this could have happened and they don't even necessarily need to explain it because honestly the, the comedy for the comedy's sake of of steven being demure and like looking up and like waving at the people who just a moment ago without a doubt were trying to kill him um is fantastic i love the idea of like this i just like you said when the when he, he goes he's trying to hand them a scarab and then he blacks out and when he wakes up like hands are just like covered in blood Mm -hmm. and it's just so good whether it's that or it's in the truck where he blacks out and when he wakes up he has a gun in his hand and he's looking over and he realizes he's just shot somebody Mm -hmm. like it's just it's so well done in a way that it i think that does work if we didn't see it like i don't necessarily think we need to like see those moments from mark's perspective but i would like to see a kind of like mark like we saw a day in the life for steven i would like to see a day in the life of mark Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that's what we get, but at the same time, I think it's also totally fine if we don't, um, I'm, I'm good either way. I'm cool either way. I really like what we're doing here and I'm super excited to see what comes next. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I think like at least how, how the end of this episode occurs, like Mark seems to be the Moon Knight persona, basically like, he's like, like Mm -hmm. you need to let me take over and he does. And when Mark takes over the Moon Knight stuff, you know, so I'm sure, I'm sure we'll see some you know manner of how that came to be and all that kind of stuff um but yeah like I, I i do love another one of those like blackouts in the car chase is like you know the the blackout of of p 
people ready to shoot him coming up alongside him. He blacks out and comes to immediately and, and is now driving in reverse. And and I love also the commentary of, oh, no, the idiot's back in control or whatever, like the 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 F. Murray Abraham uh, kind of uh, the moron, uh, the morons yeah. in charge, like the morons yeah. taking control. Yeah. Uh, and did that and, moron, and did the did, moron did, just, did throw the gun? just throw a gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, as a, you know, a, a great kind of like, yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. So, oops. Um, but like, I also like, like I, cause I've, I've only watched, I've watched the episode and then like, I went back and like watched it a second time to, to see if I like pieced together anything new now that like I'm through the full episode or whatever. And it wasn't necessarily that I pieced it together, but I, I, I appreciated more the second time around of Steven goes through all these things to try and like stay or to, to like prove to himself that he's not out there sleepwalking or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and I love that like it becomes very apparent that like Mark is like um, uh, uh, kind of sharp to that. And he knows how to get out of that ankle bracelet and he knows how to step across the sand and he knows to put the tape back up on the, on the door to like trick him. He even will go out and buy a fish if he needs to buy a fish. Um, So I love that, like whatever is going on there and, and is taking, you know, days of, of Steven's life away um, uh, is also like keen enough to try and not give the game away. Obviously he's also hiding the phone and all that stuff. Um, well, it's also like how long has like, first off, who's the original personality? I love, this is the mystery I love about it is who's the original personality. And also how long has Mark been Steven and Mm -hmm. Steven been Mark? Because that's an old razor phone. Yeah. How long has he been doing this? Mm-hmm. How like like and that brings up like an even greater question of like has he been Moon Knight for a long time? Like what's like the entire situation around this is great. I also love the idea that um, Ethan Hawke's character is clearly a like high priest of this like goddess that marks like patron was like a betrayer to is what it kind of like the feeling of it is. Um, they don't outright say, it, but he even says like, even like her greatest champion, like betrayed her. And I love that aspect of it. Cause we basically get the feeling, okay, this is like a doomsday cult. Um, he clearly has magic power because he's doing the, the, you know, the, the, the scales, the weight of the heart type thing. Um, and like, it's totally just like, what like watches a like they watch a woman die mm-hmm. in the middle of a Bavarian town square like it's great there's so much about it that like is just so great about that aspect of it and like cool Ethan Hawke's character also can apparently summon these uh like these um like demon creatures mm-hmm. to like and I love it how he's like like he one of my favorite moments is when he's holding Mark's arm and the scale's moving and it just keeps moving and he says like you know you're like you're like your soul's in chaos it's i mean it 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 does the thing where like it cuts away from his arm before the scales settle um so we don't know you know which way they they end up landing or whatever or if they if if they do end up because it it's left intentionally vague i guess to us, the audience, um, because it cuts away before there is any kind of resolution. It's it's like the you know the top spinning at the end of Inception. It's like okay, Fair. like it, it. We don't know which way it landed, but clearly it landed some way for that character to prompt his like "you're filled with chaos" line. Um, and and yeah, I'm certainly curious um, what that is going to indicate or whatever. And 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 because yeah, it's it's fascinating that. He is effectively seemingly the vessel for a neat a meat uh, or, or yeah, I think that's the mm-hmm. this one's name. Um, and uh, because, yeah, like the woman dies after her scales are red, a la that God's kind of power, um, the, the weird little like you know, uh, Egyptian minority report thing that's going on. I'm going to prejudge your future crimes. 
um, <laughs> makes me definitely wonder what that woman was going to do in the future <laughs> that uh, that leads to you know her her death um, versus That's that true. It's the like other guy you're... who's like good but doesn't have a lot of power to him. What does that mean um, in this? And so yeah, where does yeah. you know like Stephen obviously doesn't die, <laughs> um, but what does what does there's chaos in you? What is that going to mean? And how's that going to play out? Um, I'm so this, excited in this grand conflict of things. Um, trying to think any other elements to, to touch on. I like, I also, there are just a lot of like subtle things with Oscar Isaac's performance. Like I loved how effusively nerdy he is about the history and how like him telling, you know, those stories to that little girl who's super clearly, you know, not into it, doesn't care. Um, but like he gets, you know, super animated about like, oh yeah, they just, you know, they sucked everything up through the nose except the heart because the heart needed to be used for judgment or whatever. Um, and then I also, I thought, loved, the, I thought the kid, I thought the kid was pretty like, like on board with it. I like, well, she, cause she immediately like craps on him. She's like, like, Oh, how did it feel for you when you were, you know, not when you were judged not a, to be, you know, accepted to the field of whatever, blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, that's I'm not dead. <laughs> Am I? Um, uh, so yeah, I, I got the vibe. Oh, she was oh, just the like, girl, the the lady. OK, I thought you meant like the little girl. No, that's what that's what I'm saying is like, oh, the, OK, that is the little girl. Okay. Yeah. L- the little girl, like, you know, he, he goes through that whole thing with the sarcophagus and, and the little girl's like okay, how did it feel for you to, you know, not pass judgment um, or whatever? And he's like, but I'm not. Dead. But um, I will also say that like, yeah, his boss, I love the moment when they're like in the back or whatever. And he's kind of like nerding out or whatever about the, the, oh, yeah, he's like, by the way, they're, they're supposed to be uh, nine here or like nine here, but there's only seven. Yeah. Um, like I, I love that's wrong. I, I loved her response of, of uh, like, if this is you, you know, trying to, you know, audition for tour guide, that's never going to happen. I love like he starts to go, he's like, well, that's deeply hurtful. <laughs> like he has yeah. that, like, this is deeply hurtful aside and then goes back to like, like, why, why did okay. you say something? Why would you say something just to be mean to me? Yeah. Is like, I love, by the way, I love her character too, because she's like, clearly she's tired of Steven slash Mark shit. Mm-hmm. Like she's his boss. She's tired of it. And she's like reminding him, you have inventory tonight. Like, like you need to like do your job, like stop trying to be a tour guide. You're not a tour guide. You work at the gift shop. Like, like know your, like know your role, know your lane. Like I, I love that aspect of it. Cause it's like, clearly this is a boss who's aggravated with their employee. Mm-hmm. And like, I get that, but also at the same time, like she sucks. And I love that too. Like yeah. it's obvious. Like it's obvious. She sucks. She totally sucks. And it's obvious to everybody. And she just busts his balls. And yeah. I love that because it's just it's just like he is such a sweet, innocent guy that, of course, he gets his balls busted by this by this. Uh, by his boss. Yeah. Like. Um, I going back to like he, you know, he's confiding into his mom or whatever that, you know, whatever that character on the other end of the phone that he thinks is his mom is like, I like that he confides into her. I like that he confides into a living statue person as like that's like, such a great scene almost oh my god i guess like he's he's like i'm not gonna go get therapy i'm gonna go talk to a living statue person who who uh you know like uh, and, I'll, and i'll kind of play his sidekick or whatever and make sure that people are tipping and stuff also like those are weird people that are like will you take a picture of i'm like who asks for a picture with those guys <laughs> weirdos um taurus trevor taurus true, yeah from ro- from a rural area that's who um, places where there's nothing going on and a, and a living statue seems interesting. Yeah. Um, no, no, it seems more like a, a mutual beneficial thing. Cause he also gets him like dinner. Like he bought, like he bought him dinner. Oh, I didn't, um, I didn't see that he was leaving dinner for him or anything like that. I like, I definitely saw that he was talking as he's eating dinner, but like the living statue is just kind of there frozen the whole time. So I was like, yeah, I he leaves know. it. He, when he gets up, he says, okay, here's your, and it's obviously like another item like he himself was eating. Oh, OK. I and missed that. I, like, he, I thought he was he leaving another tip. tip. Yeah, I thought I, I, that's he what does. I he, he does both. Okay. He does both. Um, but yeah, it's I like also it's like I think that it was it like a how how interesting for the performer to be just like to have this gift shop worker come and just like unload on him. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. And also clearly not like the first the, time. <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely not the first time. Like you also the fact that like he leaves him one that's like particular diff, particularly like unique about like the rap or whatever that he leaves him is just like I just love that on so many levels. Just like this is not obviously not the first time. Obviously, like this guy's not told Steven to go, you know, F off somewhere. Um, like he like he's doing his living statue thing. So it's like I love it. I love that entire aspect of it. Um gosh, it's just great. Yeah. I'll be curious if if that character and that relationship like continues persists throughout the series. And if it does, what other shades we get of it or anything like that? Like like will what does if, does the guy Mark, break at some if, point? <laughs> What if Mark also goes to unload on this guy? Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, the, the, one of the, 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 I guess one of the, the few things that I have learned in kind of the, the lead up to this with Moon Knight is that there's in the comics, there's like a third alter ego that's effectively like a cabbie. Well, like, I guess what the, the, in, in the comics, Steven is much more like, billionaire kind of thing like he, he's effectively the bruce wayne so to mark moon knights mark, mark uh or mark, so mark in the, batman kind of thing in the original moon knight comics he was a little bit of i, I just realized you probably wouldn't understand this reference either because like I, nobody would remember human target the comic book um but he would basically take on these different alternate personas in order to kind of like embed himself within a caser that he was working That's and then moon knight was like the superhero like not persona so much as like a different personality but mark mark was the core personality and he was the bolt billionaire and he would do things to embed himself with okay for, on a case so my yeah and my, my so, understanding yeah. was mark is the mercenary as is this one steven is is the money and then there was like a third one that's effectively a cabbie who's like the eyes and the ears that like gives the leads to the other personas. Um, and we're not seemingly we're not getting that third persona. So I wonder if like this living statue will end up maybe filling in that role of of like being maybe. those eyes and ears of of being like, hey, here's you know, here's what I hear here around the grapevine because nobody like gives me a second look. Nobody wants to give me a second look. Um, uh, so yeah, I think you're you putting, know. I think you're putting your personal bias against living statues into this one, Trevor. I mean, that's fair, I guess. I like, I, I <laughs> don't get me wrong. I also agree with you. Who, who gives a crap about living statues? The only time I've um, ever like really encountered them. I feel like apart from like in a Yakuza game is like, you know, on Hollywood Boulevard or something like in in uh, or I guess maybe also in New York, but like in in those giant metropolitan areas and like they were in a specific spot. Um, and it was like, OK, this is interesting. This is weird. And they just kind of like, like I do get a you. thing. It's until, Times Square Elmo. Yeah. Yeah. It's Times Square Al Elmo. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Spider-Man. Yeah. It's yeah. like cool that you're doing that. Weird that you're just sp spending like, you know, hours on end frozen in position unless somebody like gives you a tip then you kind of like move or you do like a you know a wave thing or whatever and then you go back to being like you know still it's like that's a that's certainly a choice um yeah it's i mean oh, shout out they to, are they are to, another form yeah. of clowns to me where i'm just like i don't know why you choose that <laughs> as a thing to do shout out to danny from 30 rock by the way he was there a robot living yeah. statue yeah that was the only person to offer Jack Donaghy any kindness, which is how he ended up with a starring role in a television show. Huzzah. Um, yeah. Um, any other favorite moments or highlights or anything you want to give, uh, give a shout out to? I will say it like, you know, I, I, I just, do really love yeah. how, how this is shot. Um, oh, it's great. The, the CGI notwithstanding or whatever, but like the, the, especially the effects, like I'm a sucker for that effect of like, you know, the mirror, behaves one way compared to like the in real life you know situation kind of thing so the the few times we get great... those flavors is like a cool yeah and they do it they do it very well it's it's you know it's also easy to not do that well um but here i think um every one of the every time that happened i was like oh that's really cool how like you know um how they because there's one where like when he's walking through the museum or something like that and he looks at the mirror um and you can you can see it's just out of sync or whatever, but not enough for him to notice it. And so like when he continues on and the mirror kept looking at him, it's like, that's yep. awesome. Um, so yeah, I really, I'm a, I'm a sucker for those kinds of beats. Um, 
as am, yeah, I. I, I, am I. I I just really enjoyed how the like the kind of coming in and out of the Mark moments uh, really worked for Steven of just like how completely disoriented he is um, and how, yeah, if you, if, if those were just the flashes you had in that, you know, that weird, I, I said Bavarian town, I don't know where it is, but like in that town and then like, you know, you have this weird car chase thing where again, you're kind of like snapping in and out and eventually you come back and come to, and you're back there strapped in your bed I can totally understand why you'd just be like, that was just a terrible waking nightmare kind of experience that I was going through. I'm glad I'm back. Let's go ahead and go back through the day and not realize that you not only is it like significantly later than you would think you'd be, you know, but also you've missed two complete days or whatever. Like I, I, um, I think that's certainly an, an element that he's, I think is also like, flirted with before because you you were like why is he suddenly coming to now maybe it's a concussion maybe he suffered a concussion but i feel like he he he's going through all of these precautions because he gets this feeling or he he has this like understanding that something else is happening in the in between time and so it seems like Mm -hmm. he's just trying to go through all these things to like stay asleep as quickly and and be done with that as as quickly as he can um so i think I don't know if it's that like the lines are finally getting blurred or if it's that like they've always been blurred. This is just where we're dropping into the story. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm excited to see. I'm excited to find out. Um, My real final thought is just really on Oscar Isaac just being incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, He's bringing so much to this role. He's carrying so much uh, through this. And I just think that he's just done such an incredible job. He is such a gem of an actor. And it's so great to kind of see him. I I have had a concern for the sequel Star Wars main cast, the main three for a while now, because if I feel like, you know, I, I my my fear was that they would not really get the recognition that they deserve because of the like multitude of reasons why those sequel films were complicated that we've mm-hmm. talked about in summer of star wars and it's the it's that like curse of they're now only going to be seen as star wars people um in in the yeah. way that like hayden christensen hadn't done a to- whole ton outside of you know the prequels or whatever like he did, he's done a couple things here and there but like largely not um or or even like someone like carrie fisher while she had like a significantly you know good career extending i don't think she ever like escaped the princess leia role in the same way that like mark hamill or harrison ford did so i can understand yeah. being afraid that the that people are are not going to get new opportunities because of it's, star wars especially for like like i had i had definitely a lot of fear for all three of them but um, Oscar Isaac coming out and getting Moon Knight and kind of like taking off in his own direction um, has been wonderful to see and just like I'm just really happy that uh, that he's doing this so love the actor he's just such an incredible dude and also he's always been such a vocal champion for um, for the others in the world whether it's um, the LGBTQ plus um, like recently was asked about you know what, what do you think, think of about the, the, yeah the don't say gay don't gay, say gay 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 gay, gay. Yeah. i i think and then just like goes off on that spiel about uh not spiel but like uh that sounds negative but goes off on like saying gay and like talking about how ridiculous it is but also like when he was like really champion championing people who felt a certain way about um potential like avenues of character interaction and character relationships in the Star Wars films, mm-hmm. um, when he was an advocate for, uh, like he, like he's he constantly was, been. He an was advocate completely for, open to the shipping of Finn and Poe, to the point where, like, he was kind of put, like, he was kind of pushing for it. And looking at that, I like he has just always been such a vocal um, champion for for the others, and like as a minority actor himself, like, like also coming from another background. It's just it's been great to see kind of like him kind of take this. Not be afraid to take the mantle and run with it. And so getting to see his success with Moon Knight and I hope it continues. Um, I'm just I'm very excited to see for both the rest of this as well as the rest of 
rest of his career. And kind of like, what could Moon Knight be in the larger MCU? I'm excited to see what comes from that. Like, mm-hmm. this is an exciting time for being a Mar- like a longtime Marvel fan. It's an exciting time for being a comic book, just, you know, product fan as far as like seeing these things adapted. And I just, I'm really looking forward to seeing what we get out of this miniseries. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'll be very curious when all is said and done, where and how Moon Knight like sits within the pantheon of the MCU stuff. Because it feels like right now, and I think in part because of just where things are at within the MCU, like it feels like this could be just a complete standalone thing that like Mm -hmm. exists here. And then Moon Knight never really interacts with anybody else or anything like that. Or it could be tying into the black Knight thing that get, that got set up in the Eternals. Or I know there's been talk of like, um, you know, a Halloween themed one shot with some werewolf type character or something like that. It seems like they could partner up or something like that. It seems like, it seems like there are a variety of avenues that this could go down. And for a character who is as obscure of course, all, you know, so many MCU characters will have or or Marvel characters will have their cult followings and stuff like that. But like Moon Knight, very clearly not the mainstream. Most people only know him from that Dracula meme that makes the rounds every now and then on Twitter. Um, and so it, it will be very interesting to see. Like, I think it's exciting as an actor, he gets to put his stamp on that role in in the same way that like an RDJ did for, for Iron Man or something like that. But it'd also be like, to what degree is he going to get to do that in the MCU and, and how, um, you know, how frequently will we see this character? Will this character come back or will it be a one and done thing? And he's going to go on to his next fun project after this, who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm certainly excited to, like live in that mystery right now for the next few weeks and, and see where they go from here. Um, so cool. I think that is, uh, yeah. Um, so we'll dive into the report card where we grade from a plus to F. What do you want to give this first episode of moon Knight, Cameron? I give it an a, an I a. think the thing keeping it from being like a total a plus for me is some of the CGI is really freaking rough. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point where like those, like, like, I can give you that suspension of disbelief, but when those logs were coming down during the chase scene, I did not like the moment I saw those. My first thought was like, like just real obvious, just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't like, I can't believe it in some areas uh, of this. Agreed. And I think like to, to some degree, I just like, I've, I've just cut, like I've gotten used to just giving certain things slack, but I will say that, well, yes, obviously fake and and many, you know, CG things will absolutely strike fake. I also looked at that and I was like, this feels like an incredibly silly uh, Fast and Furious moment more than it feels like an MCU thing. Um, sure. With like with. Yeah, specifically with like that, the the log truck, you know, turning wildly and then a car just being like squished underneath it or something like that. I was like, OK. I can just very easily imagine Vin Diesel was in the the cupcake truck driving away inst- <laughs> instead of Oscar Isaac. Um, also, shout out to the, they're just being a cupcake delivery service. Yeah. That just does cupcakes because yeah. that was just inspired. I love that. Indeed. Um, all right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably in the same in the same boat. A eh? um, again, like some of the CGI stuff was just like, OK, well, that's like that's very clearly CGI. But I'm also like. I don't I don't fault them for that because there are enough other moments that I enjoy just from like the close up reactions or whatever in the car chase scene that if they need to like throw in some shoddily, you know, produced CGI to get us from point A to point B, I still had fun moments of Mark waking or like Stephen waking up out of this and suddenly he's driving in reverse now and trying to figure out what's going on and and uh, yeah. uh, and and, you know, leading to all that um, and. I think there'll also be like if it does if they do go the route um, of showing us what was happening in between those blackouts somehow, either in like full or in in small doses, I'm sure that'll help recontextualize. Well, oh, OK, so so maybe a lot of the budget went to those scenes instead of these. And 
uh, and we just saw them in a you know funky order for to to fully appreciate that. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, um, performances alone, Oscar Isaac alone in this gets this an easy A for me, um, and I'm excited to see where he continues to take the character. Uh, extra credit, other suggestions if you like this. I think this is the first time. There have been enough phase four things that this entire list is just all of the other phase four properties. Uh, so you have Eternals, you have Hawkeye, you have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, you have What If, you have Black Widow, you have Loki, you have the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and you have One Division. are the extra credit recommendations from Disney Plus if you end up liking Moon Knight here. Um, uh, you watching anything else on Disney Plus right now, Cam? Um, not right now, mainly because I'm leeching off of my brother-in-law's and sister's, uh, Disney plus because I just started working again. So, mm -hmm. Fair um, enough. so I haven't like, up, I haven't like renewed or updated my, uh, my subscription services also because I'm subbing. So it's not like the most consistent pay. Mm -hmm. So fair enough. Yeah. I don't think I've watched anything else of note recently, apart from what we do for this show. Um, but I'm excited because the uh, the next month uh, of stuff, as as I'm sure I will continue watching Moon Knight, uh, the next four weeks here in April are going to be Pixar themed stuff. So uh, stay yep. tuned for that. Um, as I've touched on the last couple of weeks, uh, we're basically going to look at kind of Pixar old and new. Um, so we're going to start with the most recent Pixar offering next week with Turning Red. Uh, and then we're going to go back to Luca. Uh, to kind of see things here on the the newer front of Pixar stuff. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go to A Bug's Life and Monsters, Inc., back to some of their earliest offerings. So uh, check that out uh, if you are so inclined uh, with us here in the month of April. And that's going to do it for that D Plus show. Thank you, Cam, for joining me to talk about Moon Knight here. Um, I'm sure we will also... When all is said and done, I think I put this on the calendar at some point in May, um, we'll kind of do the the full wrap up of Moon Knight um, once the series is complete. So um, feel free to return for that in five or six weeks time. Um, uh, you can follow Cameron at Rev Cabot. Anything you want to give a shout out to there, Cam? Yes, um, we have a new episode of uh, Friday Night Dying Light that should be this comes out on Friday as well, doesn't yep. it? Come out tonight. Tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, coming out late, if you're watching this earlier on Friday, um, coming out tonight is the latest episode of Friday Night Dying Light. Um, it is a very different episode than usual in that it has a, a different kind of intro. Um, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, very excited about how the series is going. I literally just put a bunch of new episodes in the can that have to be edited. So um, we have plenty of content still coming out for that. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey. Um, I will give a shout out to that Bond show. Um, uh, if you're watching this the day that this goes live, uh, tomorrow's episode of that Bond show here uh, at the beginning of April is A View to a Kill. It is the final episode of the Roger Moore era. I am so excited to be out of the Roger Moore era <laughs> um, yep. uh, and move on. Um, spoilers for the next couple weeks i really like the timothy dalton era um so uh go check that bond show every saturday on youtube.com slash that nerdy site for the thoughts from uh logan and myself um on uh bond as we continue going through um and then it's this this next one that I'm recording in the timeline of things is going to be Goldeneye, and that's the so that's like the first one I've actually watched before, kind of uh, in this series. So I'm looking forward to revisiting Bond for the first time. Um, yeah, uh, you can follow all of the latest from us and everything we do over at that nerdy site, or go to thatnerdysite.com. Once again, if you liked what you heard, please like, rate, review, subscribe, share the podcast with your friends, ring notification bells, all that fun stuff. Thank you for joining us. As always, stay nerdy, be good to each other, and class dismissed. <laughs>